Hi, my name is Randy Sung. I'm the Surgical Director of Kidney Transplantation at Michigan Medicine. I'm going to give you an overview uh, of living donation um, to start this program. Uh, well, so first off, um, why living donation? Well, the main reason is because there's simply not enough deceased donor organs for everyone that needs it. Um, unfortunately, you can't use pigs or sheep, although people are studying that possibility. Um, there's no ability to clone organs, although there is definitely a lot of research on that. Um, and there's no artificial organs. Um, you can't print them on a 3D printer like you can on uh, uh, for some other um, medical or um, anatomic structures. Um, so all of these modalities um, could come about um, and change uh, the course of transplantation and eliminate the need for living donation, but right now they're all still experimental. Um, the outcomes of living donor transplants are better than those from deceased donor transplants, so that's an advantage to the recipient. Um, but as importantly, um, generally speaking, waiting times for kidney deceased donor kidney transplants uh, are, on, are on the order of years, and with a living donor, you don't have to wait, um, which not only uh, is preferable um, to the person who needs the transplant, um, but they are also a little bit healthier when they receive the transplant. Um, so as I mentioned, living donor kidneys last longer. Um, a living donor transplant on average um, will last, projected to last about 25 years uh, if done now, where uh, compared to 15 years for a deceased donor kidney transplant. Um, now, these are averages and the actual survival of transplants in a given patient is a lot more variable. But as you can see, um, overall living donor kidneys um, will last a lot longer than deceased donor kidneys. Um, living donation is very common. Uh, this graph shows uh, the number of kidney transplants from living donors and deceased donors um, over time. Uh, and as you can see, roughly one third of um, transplants um, are from living donors. So um, it is, while we would like it to be more, um, it is certainly not experimental. Um, it's very, very well established. Um, now, sometimes people think that only blood relatives can be living donors. Uh, and while um, people that are related um, to the recipient often are living donors, um, it is absolutely not the case uh, that you have to be blood related. Um, as you can see here, um, people that are um, not related uh, can be living donors and that uh, number is increasing a little bit. Um, and so these can be um, spouses or partners. Um, these can be friends, they can be people uh, in uh, local communities like churches or a coworker. Uh, in addition, there is not an insubstantial um, percentage of donors who um, don't know the recipient uh, and just want to donate to somebody to do a good thing. Uh, so why don't more people donate? Why is there a need? A lot of it is simply unfamiliarity with donation and the need for transplantation. People may not know uh, somebody who needs a transplant uh, and therefore not be aware of the need. Um, people aren't necessarily educate, educated about um, living donation, um, although there are a lot of efforts to do that. There's a natural fear of donation simply because it's major surgery and most donors uh, are healthy. They probably haven't had major surgery before, so there's a lot of unknown. Um, sometimes resources get into the way. People can't simply can't take the time uh, away from either um, caring for people uh, in their household, from work, uh, et cetera, and that can sometimes get in the way of somebody's ability to donate. Probably the most important um, reason is just people not being aware of the need, uh, and this may be in general, not being aware that people need kidney transplants, but maybe even not being aware that somebody that they know uh, and or may even be close to needs a kidney transplant. Uh, this is a uh, picture of um, the founder of the uh, Michigan Transplant Center, Dr. Jeremiah Turcott, uh, and the first um, Michigan Medicine kidney donor, kidney transplant um, recipients um, from uh, a living donor. These were identical twins. Um, and at that time, as you can see in 1964, um, that was the only way a transplant could happen because there was really no uh, anti-rejection medication. And so, um, this was a successful transplant that has lasted uh, to this day. Uh, and this is a picture of the uh, donor and recipient with Dr. Turcott uh, at a 50 year um, anniversary celebration of uh, Michigan transplant. Uh, 
Uh, now this um, is Macy. Uh, Macy uh, was a living donor to her um, cousin uh, who needed a transplant. Uh, Macy was actually a lawyer, but she got very, very interested in living donation and uh, in um, transplantation as a result of her journey uh, from being a living donor. Uh, he was actually a, a newscaster uh, in the Midwest and he was having trouble um, executing uh, the responsibilities of his job because of his kidney failure and his transplant allowed him to get back to uh, essentially the life he had before uh, kidney failure got in the way. And uh, this whole experience um, was so impactful to Macy that she wound up changing careers. Um, she got a um, PhD in epidemiology uh, and now works for a um, uh, for a group that does um, transplant research. Um, and she also is very, very active um, in advocacy for living donors uh, in the national system. Uh, now I wanna talk a little bit about pair donation. Most living donation is direct from a donor uh, to their intended recipient, uh, but sometimes a donor and recipient are not compatible with each other. Uh, and in that case, um, a transplant can still happen. Uh, there are several different systems whereby um, donors and recipients that are incompatible uh, can um, go into a pool where they can find uh, essentially matches of um, donors and recipients that they are compatible with. Uh, in the simplest version of this, the donor and recipients simply swap so that in this example, um, donor one donates to recipient two and donor two donates to recipient one. And each person that wanted to donate donates, each person that needed a transplant got one um, just in a different way. So this is um, a very important way by which um, people can get a living donor transplant. And generally speaking, uh, if a donor and recipient uh, are not compatible, we highly recommend that they enter into their donation. There are some situations where even if the donor and recipient are compatible, the pair donation system uh, may allow um, the recipient to get a kidney that might work a little better or is, or last a little bit longer. Uh, I mentioned that there are people who want to donate but don't have anybody in mind. Uh, these uh, donors um, can uh, be um, put into the pair donation system uh, to actually help facilitate a number of transplants in this type of uh, in this type of mechanism, the what we call non-directed donor donates, um, to a recipient in the pair donor pool, and then their donor donates to another recipient, uh, and they essentially kind of pay it forward. So in this way, somebody who's a non-directed donor who's looking to help somebody can actually help uh, a number of different people get transplants. Um, so in the course of this program, um, we're going to be talking about um, finding a kidney donor and about um, <clears throat> what's involved in being a kidney donor. And uh, I'll just preface um, uh, part of the program uh, by saying there are many different approaches um, to identifying a living kidney donor. Uh, and uh, you should find uh, the approach that is um, right for you. Uh, people have different comfort levels with uh, wanting to directly ask people um, about, kidney, about being a kidney donor. Um, some people, um, utilize uh, friends or family to help do the asking. And some people um, go so far as to put it out on billboards or even on social media. This is becoming increasingly um, utilized um, and it can be an effective way to, um, to identify a living donor. Uh, and there's a, so there's a whole, you'll find that there's a whole spectrum um, of ways to find a living donor and you'll be hearing more about that um, today. Uh, thank you.